Good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Parikshit Lutra and here are the headlines we are tracking. The sell-off in Adani stocks resumes after MSCI announces a review of its free float status. The founder of Hindenburg says MSCI statement validates their claims. Another jolt for Adani Group as France's Total puts its proposed $50 billion hydrogen joint venture on hold pending an independent audit. Mutual fund inflows hit a four-month high in January. Large caps see a 700 crore inflow after two straight months of money moving out. The SIP contribution sets uh, yet another record at over 13,800 crore rupees. Meanwhile, Sensex and Nifty end a volatile session on Dalal Street with minor gains. The centre is firm about the market borrowing target of close to 12 lakh crore for the next fiscal a government official tells CNBC TV18 that the expanded senior citizen small savings scheme will help centre bridge the revenue gap. The government is expecting an additional 75,000 crore mop-up from that scheme alone. The wait for clarity continues for 200 betting and loan apps after they come under government scrutiny. IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav says government is working closely with the RBI on the issue on unregulated entities offering digital credit. Death toll in the aftermath of the Turkey-Syria earthquake crosses 17,000 as rescue operations enter the fourth day. Syrian media reports that close to 3 lakh people have been forced to leave their homes. The first humanitarian convoy reached the rebel stronghold of northwest Syria today. Alphabet shares tumble after its chatbot Bard answers a question wrong at a Google promotional event. $100 billion in market cap gets wiped out as the battle for supremacy in artificial intelligence with Microsoft heats up. After visits to London and Paris, Ukraine's President Zelensky addresses the European Union's parliament in Brussels. Zelensky has asked for fighter jets to combat Russia, but the West has neither approved nor rejected the request as yet. Now, before we get to the day's uh, big story, we at CNBC TV 18 would like to thank you, our viewers, for your sustained support, trust and loyalty, especially when it comes to the coverage of big events that shape and determine how you handle your personal finances and your businesses. Thanks to your unwavering patriot, CNBC TV 18 has once again crushed competition on Budget Day this year. Your channel has enjoyed a solid 89.9% viewership through the day. That's not all. We have also emerged the leader in the business news segment. With 88.2% with viewership during Finance Minister Nirbala Sitaraman's budget speech, again, this feat would not have been possible without your consistent support, engagement and steadfast trust in us. My team and I thank you all for giving us this opportunity all year, every year. It is truly a huge moment of pride for all of us here at CNBC TV 18. Thank you all for the privilege of letting us deliver the news that matters to you with the analysis and perspective that makes a difference to your lives. Let's kick things off uh, with the stock market action now. Volatile trading session saw the Lal Street end with minor gains. Nifty and Sensex ended mildly higher. The IT index led from the front, while metal stocks remained a major drag on the Nifty. The broader markets underperformed with the Nifty Bank and Midcaps ending the day flat with a slight positive bias. Let's take a look at mutual fund inflows in January. Equity inflows jumped nearly 72% to over 12,000 crore rupees, which is a sharp increase from around 7,200 crore in December. Large caps saw a 700 crore inflow after two straight months of outflows. Meanwhile, the SIP category was another strong performer, staying above the 13,000 crore mark. In the commodity market, oil prices struggled to gain traction despite optimism over recovering Chinese demand. This was offset by concerns of weakening activity in the United States after inventories hit the highest in months. Now to the big story this evening. The sell-off in Adani Group stocks resumed today with the 60,000 crore rupee decline in market cap. Since the Hindenburg report was released, Adani Group has lost nearly 10 lakh crore rupees in market cap. 
Barring Adani Wilmar, all group stocks closed lower, while Adani Total Gas, Adani Green Energy, Adani Transmission, Adani Power and NDTV tested their lower circuits. This after the MSCI triggered a free float review of the Adani Group securities on the index. In a statement, the MSCI said, and I quote, MSCI has determined that the characteristics of certain investors have sufficient uncertainty that they should no longer be designated as free float pursuant to our methodology. Remember, eight out of the 10 Adani Group stocks are part of the index. Meanwhile, Nathan Anderson, the founder of Hindenburg Research, said that the MSCI statement on Adani investors validated their findings. In another jolt, Total Energies, one of the largest investors in the Adani Group, has put on hold its participation in Adani's $50 billion hydrogen project until the international audit is completed. When asked about the deal, Total Energies chief said, and I quote, it was announced, nothing was signed, it doesn't exist, end of quote. Let's now go across to Vivek Ayer, who gets us more on the latest developments. Vivek, uh, what do you make of what has happened uh, when it comes to the Adani Group so far in the last few hours? Well, that's absolutely right. You know, the group continues to remain in focus. Uh, so on January 28th, uh, post, uh, you know, the fluctuation that was seen as far as the stock price was concerned and also the various news flows that was coming in, MSCI had invited uh, uh, response as well as feedback from market participants as well as MSCI members as to how exactly they should uh, uh, use or see the weightage as far as uh, Adani Group stocks in the MSCI Global Standard Index was concerned. Today morning, just prior to the expected release of the MSCI Feb Index Review, uh, where they would be announcing you know, the likely inclusions and exclusions, MSCI said that it has received the feedback and most likely, you know, by today, you will see some action being taken by the MSCI in terms of uh, the treatment of Adani Group stocks uh, within the MSCI Global Standard Index. Uh, now, why is this important? Now, remember, all of the Adani Group stocks, uh, barring Adani Wilmar as well as NDTV, are actually part of the MSCI uh, Global Standard Index. And in fact, Adani Total, Adani Enterprises, as well as Adani, uh, 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 Adani Transmission actually have the highest weightage as far as the MSCI is concerned. And these stocks, if they see a weight reduction could see some outflow coming in on Feb 28. Um, now, the other important development that you alluded to uh, is the fact that uh, France company Total Energies uh, post its conference call yesterday after announcing the results actually indicated uh, that they had put on hold the expected $4 billion green hydrogen investment that they were going to put into Adani New Industries Limited. Uh, so now uh, they've said that they're awaiting the uh, audit results that the Adani Group has promised and post which they will uh, reassess whether or not to enter. All right, thanks Vivek for joining us with that quick update. And staying with news on the Adani Group, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear on Friday two PILs seeking a court-monitored probe into the crash in Adani stocks. One PIL seeking the setting up of a special committee to look into the sanctions policy for loans of over 500 crores given to big corporates. The other claims that uh, Hindenburg short-sold Adani stocks and its report caused an artificial crashing of Adani stocks, leading to colossal losses for investors. State GST officials inspected one of Adani Wilmar's warehouses in Himachal Pradesh. The company says that it was a routine inspection and also claimed not to have any liability under the input tax credit rule. Meanwhile, Norway's $1.3 trillion sovereign wealth fund has said that it has in recent weeks divested virtually all of its remaining shares that it has in Adani Group companies. In terms of our exposure to Adani-linked companies, I want to start with the six companies we've divested from. We obviously have no exposure. The benchmark, the underweight to the benchmark was roughly 5 billion kroner at the end of 2022. We remained invested in three Adani-linked companies at that time. Adani Green Energy, Adani Total Gas, and Adani Ports, with a combined exposure of roughly 2 billion kroners. Since year-end, so the five weeks since year-end, we have further reduced our exposure in Adani companies significantly. And so today, for all intents and purposes, we have no exposure left in these nine companies. And there was constant sloganeering from opposition benches over the Adani Hindenburg issue during Prime Minister Modi's reply to the President's address in the Rajya Sabha. Opposition parties continued their demand of a joint parliamentary committee probe into the allegations. Prime Minister Modi accused the Congress party of spinning conspiracy theories. 
जो भी जिसके पास था उसने दिया उछाल और अच्छा ही है जितना कीचड़ उछालोगे कमल उतना ही ज्यादा खिलेगा हमारी सरकार की पहचान जो बनी है वो हमारे पुरुषार्थ के कारण बनी है एक के बाद उठाए गए कदमों के कारण बनी है The government told Parliament today that uh, over 2.2 lakh people renounced their Indian citizenship in 2022, the highest since 2011. The government said Indian citizens have acquired citizenship of 135 countries in the last three years. Moving on, the centre is confident about its market borrowing aim for FY24, which currently stands at around 12 lakh crore rupees. A government official has told CNBC TV18 that the expanded senior citizens' savings scheme will help the centre bridge the revenue gap. Sapna Das joins us now. Sapna, you've been speaking to your sources in the finance ministry. Uh, what can we expect now? Well, the government is very confident about sticking to its net borrowing uh, number uh, of 11.81 lakh crore, the net uh, market borrowing number. And uh, we are given to understand that their sense of comfort also stems from the important changes that they have done in some of these small saving schemes, as well as the launch of a new saving scheme for women. Uh, particularly on the senior citizens front, on the senior citizen deposit scheme, uh, the government is expecting an additional mop up of around 75 watt thousand crores just by the doubling of the deposit cap from 15 lakh rupees to 30 lakh rupees annually. Uh, now this translates into almost 0.25 percent of the GDP on the new revised nominal base uh, for FI24. It's a big number to speak about. Similarly in terms of doubling the investment and or the deposit caps or MIS. Uh, so all in all their sense of comfort comes from a good and a healthy mop up which is likely from small savings. Of course there is a budget target of 4.71 lakh odd crore but uh, given the way uh, you know the expectation on the government side is uh, you know there could be a chance of the government actually exceeding that number. Last but not the least, uh, PPF and Su Sukanya Samriti, these were the schemes which are not incentivized in the budget simply because they are already under exempt, exempt, exempt uh, uh, tax treatment. Uh, so any further uh, you know, relief was not possible for those schemes. A quick look now at the earnings reported today. Zomato has posted revenues of nearly 1,950 crore rupees in the third quarter. Revenues stood at 1,100 crores in the year ago period. The company's EBITDA loss has also narrowed to 366 crore rupees. However, Zomato has reported a net loss of nearly 350 crore rupees. Strictly speaking, the numbers are not comparable as this is the first quarter after consolidation of Blinkit. In international earnings, Disney's first quarter numbers for this fiscal largely beat street estimates. Smaller subscriber losses and a beat on the top and bottom line were the key highlights. Disney Plus reported a subscriber loss of over 2 million, courtesy a hike in prices. And speaking of losses, the company has also decided to cut 7,000 jobs as part of its restructuring plan. Snacks and beverage giant PepsiCo's revenues beat estimates in the fourth quarter. The rise in revenues was fueled by higher prices. However, the price hikes hurt demand and the company saw its volumes drop across its food business. IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav has said that the government is working closely with the RBI on the issue of unregulated entities offering digital credit. This is the first official word from the government on a potential ban on more than 200 loan and betting apps. The minister also said that the government will aim to roll out digital credit by the end of the year. Speaking of rollout, uh, is it a cause of concern for the government when there are unregulated entities operating in this digital space? This is why I have a very thoughtful way, a very thoughtful way, a very thoughtful way, a very regulated way, like the digital credit, which is not so much digital credit, विश्वसनीय उतना ही रिलायबल हो जितना आज हमारा डिजिटल पेमेंट सिस्टम है। वैक्सीन मेकर सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट्स एचपीवी वैक्सीन अगेंस्ट सर्विकल कैंसर सर्वेवैक हैज इस लाइकली टू बी अवेलेबल इन द प्राइवेट मार्केट दिस मंथ। दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट इंटीग्रेटेडली डेवलप्ड एचपीवी वैक्सीन। कॉर्ड the government has introduced the competition amendment bill with changes which could have huge implications for big tech. The biggest amendment proposed is to levy penalty on the global turnover instead of domestic turnover in case of violations. Defending the changes, former CCI chairman Dharendra Kumar said it is relevant to look at the global turnover when the entire digital economy is interconnected globally. 
this would uh, definitely have a lot of implications for uh, digital enterprises, particularly the so-called big tech, uh, when uh, their entire uh, uh, turnover is being considered. Uh, and also the fact that it would also include maybe the exports. But the fact remains that in a digital economy, when uh, the entire economy is interconnected globally on the digital platform, and sometimes the uh, transactions uh, and their economic uh, import is beyond the frontiers of the country, it is uh, probably relevant to look at the global turnover. And getting you a news break right now, promoters of SREI Group have submitted a proposal to withdraw the group companies from insolvency. Sources say that promoters have submitted a plan to the lenders claiming that the current plans do not offer fair consideration to the group's creditors and stakeholders. Ritu Singh joins us now with more details. Ritu, what will happen to the SREI resolution plan now? Well, really, this is a very last-minute twist because we understand that the promoters of Shrey Group, that is the Canoria family, have now submitted a proposal to withdraw the company from insolvency under Section 12A of the IBC to the administrator of these companies. Now, this settlement proposal comes from the Shrey promoter firm Adi Street Commercial just days ahead of the voting decision on the three resolution plans which have been submitted for, uh, for the company from NARCL, Autumn and a consortium of Valde and Arena, as we've been reporting. Now, as part of the proposal, the promoters have offered to fully repay the secured and unsecured lenders their dues in the form of various debt instruments, which will include your NCDs, OCDs, etc., over a period of time. This they propose to do so by monetizing some assets using some of the cash that is already on the books of the company and also infusing money through an identified investor, which they haven't named, and so on. Now, lenders, however, we understand are unlikely to consider this last-minute proposal uh, from the Canoria family, given that the company was brought under IBC by the RBI for governance-related concerns, among other reasons, in the first place. Now, meanwhile, the voting decision, we understand, on the resolution plans has been extended. Uh, the decision is likely by the 14th of Feb. And as we've been reporting earlier, in NPV terms, uh, the National Asset Reconstruction Company, that has made the highest offer of 5,555 crores against the total admitted claims of a about 32,700 crores from various creditors. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ritu, for joining us with that big exclusive right now. We're going to take a short break right now, but on the other side, death toll in the aftermath of the Turkey-Syria earthquake crosses 17,000 as rescue operations enter the fourth day. Details when we are back. Now to the big global story. The death toll from the devastating earthquake and aftershocks that hit Turkey and Syria has now crossed 17,000. Tens of thousands of others have been injured. Rescue operations continue amid freezing weather conditions for the fourth day as hopes of finding more survivors amid rubble of collapsed buildings fade away. In Syria, around 3 lakh people have been forced to leave their homes since the earthquake in government control areas alone. The United States, uh, the United Nations said that the war-hit country urgently needs life-saving aid. The first convoy of humanitarian assistance reached northwest Syria, a rebel stronghold earlier today. India has sent six planes with personnel, medical equipment and relief material to Turkey and Syria under Operation Dost. Ukrainian President Zelensky made a visit to the United Kingdom on his way to Brussels to lobby EU leaders to ramp up their support in the war against Russia. This is his third visit abroad since the Russian invasion began. He was received by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in London. The Ukrainian president addressed the UK Parliament. He urged the UK to supply them fighter jets. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said nothing is off the table. Zelensky also met French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris in a bid to secure Supply of long-range missiles, Macron assured that Ukraine can count on France to win this war. Just two days after Google unveiled its chat GPT rival Bard, its parent company Alphabet lost $100 billion in market cap. The reason behind this wipeout will stun you. It was a blunder committed by Bard in a promotional video shared by Google. The video showed Bard telling a nine-year-old that James Webb Telescope is used to take pictures outside of the Milky Way, which is in fact not true. The error weighed on investor sentiments and raised concerns over Google's AI bet against its rival, Microsoft. Delhi High Court granted bail to former CEO of the National Stock Exchange, Chitra Ramakrishna, in an illegal phone-tapping case. The enforcement directorate, which had arrested her in July last year, alleged that Ramakrishna conspired to cheat NSC employees 
by illegally tapping their phones. After South America, Netflix has extended its crackdown on password sharing to four more nations, Canada, New Zealand, Portugal and Spain. These countries will now have to pay an additional charge if they are looking to share the membership with friends or family they don't live with. The media giant claims that around 100 million people across the world are sharing accounts, which has hit the company's revenue. Twitter rolls out its premium subscription service, Twitter Blue, in India, Brazil, Indonesia. The service will cost 900 rupees per month for iOS and uh, Android users in India and 650 rupees a month for those using Twitter on the web. Twitter Blue subscription adds the blue check mark to the user's profile name and gives access to additional features like editing a tweet and posting longer videos. Hyderabad is gearing up to host the country's first all-electric Formula E World Championship race. The teams and drivers have started arriving in Hyderabad. So that brings us the first look of the Jaguar TCS Racing Gen 3 electric car and what the team is hoping to achieve this weekend. Mitch Evans has been racing with the Jaguar uh, TCS racing team ever since Jaguar Racing entered the championship way back in 2017-2018. He in fact finished second in uh, the Drivers Championship last year. I'm sure the hunger for another, you know, just to get into this Drivers uh, Championship is right there. First of all, welcome to uh, Hyderabad. How has it been so far? Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome. Um, it's great to be here in India for the first time. It's, it's a big race for us as a team. Obviously, um, with the TCS uh, partnership being our title partner, um, we have a big fan base here. So, um, yeah, the first race for Formula E in, in India is it's going to be a special moment. So, yeah, as you touched on, getting second last year has definitely gave me, given me a lot of hunger for this year. And um, a whole new car with a Generation 3 car for the season. So a lot of things that we're still learning about. Um, and obviously, this week, we've got a whole new track to learn. Formula E is, is a, obviously a very, you know, it's growing rapidly and it's a very fast growing championship because of the technology. Um, obviously, you know, globally around the world, EVs are becoming more and more present. But yeah, the Tata um, battle is going to be fun with uh, Mahindra. Um, but uh, yeah, we're doing all we can to make sure we come out on top. You guys have had an interesting start to this season. Uh, the last two races looked pretty dominant, at least with Sam Bird's car. So are you planning to have a very dominant performance this weekend? Well, we're definitely going to be working really hard. This is almost like a home, it's a home race for us. With proud part of the Tata family and with TC as the title partner, it's a home race. And we can't underestimate the competition though. We have an incredibly com competitive championship here in Formula E, incredible car manufacturers, teams and drivers. So we prepare every weekend with a goal absolutely to taste champagne as we say, to take the top step of the podium. Um, and that's going to be our focus coming to this weekend. But yeah, we, we definitely never complacent and we're just going to work as hard as we can throughout the weekend to hopefully come out on top on Saturday. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. News continues right here on CNBC TV 18.